Hi, I'm Lisa Ladoussard, and I'm the creator of the 40 Years of Goth Style video, which hopes to document and celebrate uh, the evolution of goth fashion from 1976 until today. This is my first YouTube video on my new YouTube channel. I'm normally a writer and a public speaker, but uh, a lot of people have left comments and questions for me based on the video, and I would like to answer some of those today. Everything from where you can buy some of these clothing items to what the fuck was I thinking? So, I'm gonna try and get to as many of those comments as we possibly can. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk over the video now and I'll pause to explain things, starting with the title, 40 Years of Goth Style. So, we didn't call it 10 Types of Goth because this was very much inspired by those 100 years of fashion time-lapse videos. I love all of those, but they're very mainstream, and I wanted to do something more alternative, starting with the clothes that I wear and think are the most beautiful and interesting of the different youth or subcultural styles, which is goth fashion. So that's the idea we took. One model in a studio being dressed in different outfits that are supposed to show the evolution of this fashion through the decades. And we started 40 years ago in 1976 with punk. Now there's a lot of little things I would change about this video. And the big one is I would put the date on the screen. We didn't want to copy those other videos, I think. And I wanted to, I thought it'd be fun to show the names of different goth styles to people. But uh, I just assumed everyone would guess that we were traveling through time starting with the 70s and I really should have made it more clear. So on the screen here, it should say 1976 slash punk. And the reason it's there is because of history. I understand opening up a goth fashion video, seeing a punk girl first can be confusing, but um, I really wanted to show that this came from somewhere. And that was the UK punk explosion of the 1970s. Without that, I don't think post-punk, Batcave, goth as we know it would have existed after. For our outfit, we could have chosen any number of styles back then. There was no uniform per se. It was very DIY. We modeled this after a specific person, and that is Susie Sue. Susie, to me, is the most important goth style icon. But before she was super goth, she was an original UK punk. And so this outfit is modeled on photos of her from the 1970s. The t-shirt with the boob print we made as a reproduction of the classic Vivian Westwood tits t-shirt. I think you can find other people selling them on Etsy. The rest of the outfit is very simple. Vintage black leather jacket, vintage pumps. I've heard people say punk rock girls don't wear heels. Well, some did. Back then, uh, the fishnets, classic, miniskirt, classic, and the hair, short and spiky. Not everyone had a mohawk, certainly not girls. The makeup, uh, again, was from a specific Susie photograph, and it shows the really bold, heavy black eyeliner of the original punks, and that is something that definitely continues as we move into goth style proper. Batcave. This represents the early 1980s, I would say around 1982, when goth style starts to emerge on its own. And we call it Batcave because there was a club by that name before goth was really even called goth, uh, where the original goths hung out and started to develop what would become uh, a style distinct from punk, separate from new romantic, all black clothing, uh, white face, lots of shadows in your makeup, ghoulishness, big hair, crimped hair. Um, there's a fetish angle even at this time in the 80s, which is why she's wearing the harness there. And my old bondage belt, actually, from the 80s, which is finally coming out of the closet. It doesn't fit me anymore, but it fits Cassandra, our model, who here is, again, based on uh, Susie Sue from the 80s. Uh, many of you have pointed that out. So the boots, the high boots, um, the mini skirt, which is a latex skirt from House of Etiquette here in Toronto. They helped us a lot, actually, with this video, House of Etiquette. And um, yeah, just a simple outfit. Otherwise, the important thing here really is the hair, huge backcombed, crimped black hair and the makeup, what is now iconic Susie makeup, that sort of Egyptian inspired cat eye are um, 
makeup artist Andrea Heldman loves Susie as much as I do. And I think she really nailed that makeup look. Death Rock. Okay. I understand people are very confused by this. I think it might be, again, because it doesn't say 1985 on the screen. And that's what this look represents to me. When goth comes to America, specifically California, in the mid 80s, mixes with like Hollywood glam, and you get something that looks like this. The leggings and the skirt are both lip service, vintage lip service. And uh, I really wanted to, whenever possible, find clothes that was authentic to the era. So I was really glad some of my friends still had these uh, in their closets. Lip service was a really important brand. One of the first sort of streetwear companies mass producing clothes for this new underground market. And I know the glam rockers wore it, but where I'm from, a lot of the goths did too, along with that sort of PVC corset. This one is latex, again, House of Etiquette, and the fishnet shirt that's made from a pair of fishnets that are just ripped in the crotch. Still don't understand why you would ever pay more for something uh, when you don't have to. The hair is, um, again, confusing people. It is not Madonna. It is um, actually, as some people have pointed out, very Nina Hagen, and it's there to show three trends in hair in the mid 80s, which were extensions, crimping, and spray on collar. Uh, not everybody had a black death hawk in 1985. People even wore blue, right? Like it was very colorful time back then. And, uh, you know, I've heard from a lot of death rockers that they hate this look and maybe we shouldn't have called it that. But um, I think that it is a pretty accurate sort of mid 80s goth club LA look. Romantic is my favorite of all the goth styles, so I'm happy it was really popular in the early 90s, which is what we're showing here. Long velvet dresses, hyper feminine, you've got that silhouette. If you could afford a corset to make you look like Vampira or Elvira, you would. This one was made here in Toronto by Totally Wasted Corsets. Uh, the dress is vintage Toronto uh, independent designer. I've heard people comment that this looks costumey to them or too cheap to be goth. Um, again, we went for vintage uh, as much as we could. And this was legit made by a Toronto independent designer and sold at the goth shop and worn by my friend out dancing for many years in the 90s. So this didn't come from the Halloween store. They didn't sell goth clothes at the Halloween store in the 90s and uh, I just I like the flowiness to it and uh, that's what we were going for here the wig has a v-bang inspired by a particular model I've always liked Wednesday morning but also um, a lot of people had that look I mean it's very 90s vampire inspired right people were obsessed with Anne Rice interview with a vampire people were, were playing vampire the masquerade and uh, so we just tried to like do that up as much as possible in that look cyber Cyber is, I guess, also called Graver, and it's what happens when rave meets goth. Uh, this happened where I'm from around the late 1990s when rave was super mainstream, and we really started to see a shift in the clubs of the kind of music that was being played and the clothes people were wearing. That day glow, glow in the dark sort of clothes started to come in, the big boots, the wild synth hair. And um, in retrospect, I, I think we've mixed too many colors here. But again, we were trying to get like legit clothes from the era. And this is what we had available to us from that time period. The pants are Cyberdog, uh, which the model Cassandra brought in. The top is uh, Plastic Wrap, which is a, a streetwear company here in Toronto. And the hair was made for us by Modlocks. Karen has been doing synth dreads for cyber goths since that, you know, was a thing. So um, we were really happy by including this look, even if we didn't completely nail it so much. I wish we'd had her in a skirt so you could see the big transmuter boots uh, that she's wearing. And we made the club scene sort of the, you know, uh, black light scene to show that this was a club style. I don't remember too many people walking around in the day like this, but at nighttime, yeah, there were a lot of cyber goths. Lolita. So I learned some things when this video came out, such as the Lolita community has a lot of rules and they take their fashion very seriously. They know this is not Lolita. And so I apologize to them, but that's not what we were going for. This isn't a 40 years of uh, Japanese street style. 
history video. This isn't a different type of Lolita history video where we're showing what goth Lolita looks like. This is here to represent the early 2000s when that style became more popular in the West. And certainly where I'm from, you started to see a move away from that sort of trad goth, long velvet vampire look or sexy fetish PVC look and into something much more uh, pretty and doll-like and innocent, inspired by Lolita. The dress was made by Gloomith, a lovely fashion designer here in Toronto who's been doing this stuff since the mid-2000s. And um, the makeup, again, not Lolita proper, was inspired uh, by the dark cabaret trend that happened around this time also with the rise of like the Dresden Dolls and Amanda Palmer and people like Emily Autumn. And we gave her a parasol because every goth should have one. The red petticoat we've heard is a no-no to show off your undergarments. Perhaps in Lolita, that's true. Where I'm from in the world of goth, showing your inner sort of inner wear as outer wear has never really been an issue. I think that's a little cute sequence. So um, sorry to the real Lolitas, no offense meant. Um, same with the steampunk actually is its own scene. And we're not trying to say that this is what a steampunk outfit looks like. What I'm trying to show is that in the mid 2000s, steampunk's popularity sort of impacted goth fashion and the sort of cosplay aspect of it happened. Goth started wearing brown sometimes, or uh, as we're trying to show here, that long bustle skirt, that sort of um, almost neo-Victoriana. We could have had a Victorian goth here, actually, um, I think is, is a look that we're missing in the video. Um, but I think steampunk and goth are connected in their love of history and uh, Victoriana specifically. We put her in a red wig because not every goth has black hair. And the most important thing is that it's crimped and it's big. Pin up. All right, let's just stop here and talk about this. Um, I got to be honest with you. This was supposed to be psychobilly. You know, there is a goth version of pin up. You call it psychobilly, gothabilly, horror punk, what have you. And around this time, you know, around 2010, it was really popular. We unfortunately did not get the outfit that we had planned to use here and um, decided to just go ahead with what we had available because Cassandra, our model, makes a really great pinup model. And I wanted to show that that was a trend, that sort of retro 50s style had started to become quite popular in goth shops. You know, monster prints, you know, a different silhouette, that sort of 50s dresses, um, you know, skulls and bones. I love the monster skirt. That outfit is from Pinup Girl Clothing. I love the coffin purse, but, you know, it's not goth. And in hindsight, we could have pulled this out of the video and I think people would have been kinder to us about the other looks um, if this wasn't in here. So if we do it again, uh, Gothabilly would go there. Pastel goth is the look I thought would be the most controversial because most of my goth friends really hate this style. I mean, it's pink. Start there, right? Um, it doesn't really connect to goth music or culture in most ways. And I'm very curious why it even was called pastel goth. If you identify with this style, if you consider yourself a pastel goth, I'd leave a comment. I'd love to hear more about how you see it connecting with goth. Because to me, it comes more from, again, Japanese street style influence and um, the rise of Tumblr fashion and sort of creepy cute style as much as anything. I actually really love this wig and I would say that of all the sort of pastel goth style, the one thing that has influenced or sort of been absorbed by goth the most is that um, ombre hairstyle, whether it's a wig or whether it's your own. I love that sort of gray, silver, lavender color scheme that's become popular even today. So, uh, the t-shirt we had made, the rest were sort of pieces that we could find. We're not pastel goth, so um, I don't know that we nailed this look, but I wanted to show that it was a thing. New goth represents modern day. We put 2016 at the time. And, um, you know, we could have put a bunch of different looks here. Health goth, for one. We could have also had a trad goth, because the thing with this fashion is that 
certain things never really go away. You just add different styles to them. I mean, cyber was a trend. We don't really see that too much anymore, but traditional 80s goth is still very much alive in 2015. But I love this new bohemian style of goth, and I don't really care that it's hipster, and um, I know some pagans and witches are offended at how many occult symbols are shown in this outfit. The Killstar leggings are filled with occult symbols. She's wearing a hood. We've made a circle. She's got a pentagram on. But that's the trend. That's the style. And goths have always worn crosses, even if they're not Catholic, inverted crosses, even if they're not Satanists. I mean, religious iconography even when blasphemous, has been a part of goth art and style for a long time. So I'm sorry if you're offended. I didn't make this up. It's just the way it is. And I love this outfit. Again, Killstar leggings. The jumper is just from the mall. The hood is um, from Plastic Wrap. Again, this is a modern piece from them called the Salem Hood. You can buy it on their Etsy store. And I love how easy this is. You don't need to squeeze yourself into a latex corset <laughs> if you don't want or wear like really uncomfortable shoes. You can wear leggings and something long and flowy and black and simple makeup and still feel the goth vibes. So uh, I really like this look and, and I'm glad we went out on it. And that is 40 years of goth style in under four minutes or under 15 minutes of me talking, I think. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. You know, when we made this video, we had no idea that a million people were going to see it around the world. And uh, it's been a trip. All the comments, positive and negative, have, have been really great to see and um, inspired us to make the men's goth style video, which uh, I hope you have enjoyed. And I'll probably do a commentary for that as well, because uh, there are many questions <laughs> about the outfits in that video, too. So subscribe to the channel uh, to be alerted when that comes out. And hopefully we'll be making more subcultural style videos in the month ahead. Thanks.